Okay, I'm here again with Alfie Warren, and we are going to be talking about the upcoming fight this weekend with Crotch and Groves and the undercard. Alfie? Good to see you again. Thanks for, <laughs> for talking for, for Baylor X TV. Let's talk about the main event, Crotch and Groves 2. The build up, your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, build up's gone probably as everyone expected. I think um, he's gone about it a different way now, obviously. Crotch, where he's um, shut himself out, um, looks a bit more focused than what he did the last time. Um, saying about George not getting un getting under his skin and all that, I don't think I don't think if that's George's game plan, if if it is George's game plan to get under Crotch's skin, I don't think it's worked or whatever. But um, I mean, yeah, the build up is it as it's expected. You know, I think it's the same same. It's, it's like a mer it's been a merry-go-round. I mean, you watch the gloves that are off and all that. It's yeah. the same thing. Um, George um, elaborating on the last fight, and it shouldn't be stopped, which I think it was a terrible stoppage right. as well. I mean, and I can understand George's frustration with with that. Mm -hmm. um, Carl Crotch saying, don't, "Don't like George crying about it, obviously." But <laughs> I mean, it's all come to this point now on Saturday night, so we're going to see it. I mean, the talk is all over now. Really, the build up, like you say, it hasn't really had. I don't think it's really, it's only been the last few days, I think, where the build-ups really become, become fight week, mm -hmm. really, because obviously I don't think he's needed to, to sell it as much, because mm -hmm. everyone wanted to see the rematch, obviously it was a it was controversial ending to the last fight, so controversy sells, of course, and obviously it was a, it was a great fight, the first fight, and people will, will want to see it again, and see a natural conclusion to the fight now, and I really, really hope that we do see that on Saturday. Okay, who are you picking before you make your decision for the first fight? I picked Groves. Did you? For the first fight, yeah. I picked Groves for the first fight, and I believed he was going to do exactly what he did do. And a lot of people were calling me um, mad and all that, no, he's a young pretender and all that, but I, I, I just, I've, I've studied, I've studied Carl Crotch fighting before, and I've watched George Groves numerous of times fight, and put their styles together and I knew that George Groves was going to be a handful to, to, to Crotch. I knew he would. And what it was, he come out, whether Carl Crotch says, I wasn't at the races, I underestimated him and all that, which he might have done as well, but I don't think, even if he was to have took him seriously, I don't think it would have been as much difference. I really, really don't. I just think that George's speed, the way George's style is and like his stance, I mean you see him mm. and he commands the middle of the ring, like the way the way he stands and all that, yeah. his presence just in front of you. And Carl Crotch is used to coming forward and all that. Yeah. And as soon as, he, as soon as he was coming forward, bang, Groves was going out and he, he, he knew, I, I knew exactly what he was going to do. Very, very surprised with the first round knockdown, which I didn't think was going to happen, but it did happen. I did think that was going to happen some stage of the fight, but yeah. for it to happen that early was it. But, and to be honest with you, um, Carl Crotch, I mean, you can't take it away from Carl Crotch because he's, he is a warrior. He's, he's granted chin, he's durable, and he will come back at you. And you know what? Fair play for him for getting up on the floor, and fair play for um, for seeing those rounds after such a heavy knockdown, which you've got to give him credit for. But the thing is, whether, I don't know, like, whether, um, some guys are going, yeah, well, from the sixth round onwards, Carl Frotch was, um, the, the fight changed. I, I didn't see a change in the fight whatsoever. I really, really didn't see a change. In my opinion, I didn't see a change in the fight. I thought it was one-sided. I thought George, I probably, if anything, would give Frotch one round out of the nine, out, or out of the eight, because obviously yeah. he stops in the nine, but I'll give him one round out of there. And it was, I mean, it, you, you watch the ninth round, it was so, the, just before the, the, the stoppage, it was so sluggish. Yeah, he tagged George, and maybe George was hurt a bit as well. He was stunned, obviously, from that, which is not very cold crotch for, for, for taking all that beating and still having the power probably to tag him and maybe rattle him. But it was so sluggish, obviously, George had gone back into the ropes. He was still trading, that's the thing. He was still trading before, before the stoppage. He might have got hit a couple of times that were heavy, and what it is, I mean, Carl Frotch is saying that he tried to grab his legs and all that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think he did at all. What I think it was, he was trying to get out, get out of the situation. Yeah, yeah. 
when she was drunk. And then, like, I had people, like, people ringside when they were watching the thing, because the thing that he turned his back on Carl Podge. Like, what's over? Because he was going to get out of it, and obviously the referees jumped in front of George, yeah. preventing him to turn around. Yeah. If, if you watch it, preventing yeah. George to turn around there. Because what he was going for is get out of the situation, regroup, and go round. And yeah. whether or not it was 10 seconds away from Carl Poch knocking him out, which it might have been, or whether George Groves was going to compose himself and box his way through to victory, it's to do with, with Robert seeing, it was Robert seeing that yeah. conclusion. Mm -hmm. But this fight, I'm not going to see any difference, to be honest with you. And I don't think Carl can adapt to any other way of fighting apart from what he does. It was the same um, as Ricky. With Ricky Atten as well, which is a great fight. I mean, he's a great fighter of whatever. I mean, he was Sam Floyd, maybe the senior was Sam Wright. I'm going to teach him some new things in the gym. You're going to adapt to it, and um, you're going to see a different Ricky Atten and all that. But at the end of the day, Ricky Atten has boxed the same his whole career. He boxed the same his whole career, and going to um, Floyd maybe the senior is not going to change what he'd do. He'd be too late on in his career to change his style, and it's exactly the same thing as um, Carl Froch. I mean, Ricky Atten went to the Pacquiao fight under Floyd Mayweather Sr., went to fight Pacquiao, and whether Floyd taught him new tricks or something in the gym that went out the window and he, he, he boxed the same fight, which he did double the time, he was, he, he was too long in the tooth to change any style. He couldn't adapt to any other style because that's the way he's been fighting the whole life. And it's the same with Carl Froch. There's nothing he's going to do that's going to be any different to what he's going to do in the first fight. And this is why I'm backing George Groves in this. I really, really am. And the thing about it is everyone's saying about, well, Carl Frosch is going to prepare better this time. Carl Frosch is going to um, be on his A-game. Carl Frosch is going to learn from his mistakes. Fair enough, George, George Groves made a couple of mistakes in that fight. Do people not think that George Groves is going to go back to the drawing board and prepare for those mistakes of what, what he did in the Carl Frosch? Whether he, I don't think he did put that much of a foot wrong, but a couple of things what he might have done wrong, he's going to, he's going to put right. And that is the thing. Everyone... and. I think people like, oh, sorry for George, because everyone's going, oh, yeah, he, he wasn't on his, on his game and all that. George is going to correct the couple of problems what he did. Maybe Carl Frosch is going to look back and correct, prepare that. But at the end of the day, it's not going to change their styles, and it's not going to change their approach to the fight. And I'm, I'm just looking for um, Groves to cruise to a points victory for me. Okay, let's throw some things up. Um, my prediction was that Frosch would come from behind and stop Groves in nine rounds. Bang on. That happened. Um, I not, not the way we wanted it to happen, but it obviously it happened. Yeah. Right, so, two things I want to throw up. Um, dynamics of first fight, let's get coming into it. From what I saw, Groves was not in contract. He was out of contract. He was a free agent, basically. And going to fight against Frotch, who was promoted, and good friends of Eddie Hearn. Um, Seemed as if you know, if Groves had won that title, technically he could have walked away with both titles and had nothing to do with Eddie Hearn. Does that play a part in? Did that play a part in the first fight and the referee stoppage? I don't. No, I don't think it played that much of a part in what what it was. I think um, some things were used to Carl Foch's advantage, which I bet he wishes you know, like the the side for the ring. I couldn't believe how small the ring was, and that was obviously used. Which they thought that it would be a Carl Frosch advantage because right. they thought why Carl Frosch going to close the space down and all that. And I mm. think, to be honest with you, I, that, that backfired on him because I think George suited the little ring as well. Right. Little, silly little things like that, I mean, um, where, where, where your promoter is. Obviously, George had to okay that. He said, yeah, it's fine, no problem. But everything, silly little things like that was there to suit Carl Frosch. But I don't think um, George Groves being out of contract, I mean, would have had any, I don't think it would have had any. Any, any influence on the decision. I know, I know where you're coming from. In terms of the referee, as, as soon as Groves was any sort of trouble, stop the fight. I think, I mean, I, I, just, I, just, I just can't see how a fight, so I mean, I'm not really going to, I mean, how Foster made a bad, bad decision that, that But that did he fight. make a bad decision or a premeditated decision? There's a difference between a bad decision I, I, and a premeditated decision. To be honest with you, I, I think it was a split second decision, in my opinion. I think it was a split second decision. And I think as soon as he'd done it, he regretted it. Because I mean, I've, I, I mean, I've seen things like that. I mean, I remember watched um, Enzo Matrinelli fight over McKenzie in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, was it in, in John, in in John, John Lewis? Lewis. In yes. John Lewis, who's one of the top. I, I, I love in John Lewis. I think that he's one of the best officials in England mm -hmm. as well. You can't get any more. 
Um, and I think, obviously, the wars that Matt Ranelli was in, and it was such a premeditated um, stoppage, I think that was even probably worse than yeah. Rose and Frotch, obviously, yeah, yeah. because Rose and Frotch was more um, highlighted and mm. more in the spotlight. Yeah. You're going to always remember that stoppage. Yeah, yeah. But you see things like that, and I don't think, I mean, th and um, Enzo Matt Ranelli was um, a great fighter. Right. So, and he was um, a defending champion. Right. So I, th I don't think um, he has a, any role to play in. Obviously, I think right. the um, referee is going to make a split decision, and where, where they think it is. But I'm not, we're, we're, like how how we're crossing in the ring, he's watching it. To be honest with you, I, it, there's there's no way. He sh and I, I, I think Howard Foster will agree now. That there's no way he should have stopped that fight because that was the, that was the only sign of trouble. George Rose was in, and to be honest with you, you was flat out, George. <laughs> you was flat out whatsoever because after the stoppage, what like that? He's yeah. he's, he's 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 not he's not dazed. He's not anything. But um, going back to that, obviously, like you're saying about being out of contract or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, really, I mean, the thing conspiracy theory. There's always going to be a conspiracy theory of all course. the time in there, and people are going to ask the questions. But in my opinion, I don't think that had any influence. I just think it was a referee making a split decision, made a bad decision, a decision he's going to regret now. But um, without that decision, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be okay. in Saudi. So, so, so how does Saudi, and now that um, Frotch Rose, sorry, has signed with Saudi Rose, how does that affect now his positioning in terms of contractual agreement and sort of second part? How does that? Well, I think. Um, Obviously, George had had to go to the IBF to get mandatory because, um, obviously, they're probably both going to rematch. Mm. And, and they signed uh, after that, after the fight was announced, then Saudi signed with him. Not oh, before. yeah, 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 of course. So, so I mean, I don't, know, I don't know who he's on contract talks. I don't know who he on promotional talks with, obviously. Um, he's with Salomon now, though. He's, he is with Salomon now, yeah. yeah, which I think is a, is, is a good move for George, really, because there's um, some... Great fighters. Only if he wins the world title. Could be. Well, if he, if he doesn't title. win the world title. I think even if he doesn't win the world titles, I think because the one thing is that, that in my opinion, I don't. Um, if, if he does win the world title, the one thing you can guarantee is George is going to put a good display on himself. And um, if he does lose the world titles, he loses to Carl Frotch, who uh, people believe is one of the uh, pound for pound fighters, pound for pound best fighters. And world, um, that's other people's opinions or whatever, but um, if he loses there, I don't, he, he's young enough, you know, I mean, he's 25, 26, I think, mm -hmm. so he's young enough, he can give you a good career out there anyway, we, we, win, lose or draw tonight, um, I still believe that George Rose will be the future of British boxing, okay. but as, a, as I say, I'm very, very confident that George is going to win anyway, so, but with Sauerland, with if he does, or when he does, should I mm -hmm. say, um, when he does win the world titles, he's got uh, so many super fights out there. I mean, you've got Arthur Abraham, Mikel Chesler, all those Zaki guys. Zaki Obika. Zaki Obika. I mean, yeah, the, 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 all these fights that um, Salden and all that are capable of making, capable of throwing the money in, cap capable of throwing money in and giving George his um, home advantage as well. They've got their hands in their pocket and make sure that happens. So, yeah, I think... Um, Bit, bit, bit strange why he should do it 10 days before the fight or something. Maybe yeah. that's um, a move on his part or something. I'm not too sure. So, um, yeah, as I was, just wish um, George the best of luck in that um, venture, really. And I think he's in good, uh, good hands with Sauerland. I think Sauerland's the best, um, best up and coming, well, it's about up and coming, they're established now, yeah. they're the best young promoters in the, in the world. Mm. I think they're absolutely brilliant. They do a brilliant job for boxing. And I think they're going to do a brilliant job for so the other thing I want to talk about is obviously the back and forth between George and, and Carl. This time around, Carl seems more spot on in terms of the, especially the last playoff spot that I had. Yeah. Carl seemed mentally more together with it. There are times Rose was looking like, as if to say, you're answering me back, but you're not meant to be doing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I d I'm not too sure as referees are just saying, like, I, I don't know. I mean, he was amazed. He's like, this yeah. guy's talking what he's talking. I can't believe he's talking yeah. rubbish. And I wonder which, what sort of side George is looking at. I don't know. I mean, where he's found this confidence from or something. Was it the sports psychologist or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
seeing that, when we just sign off on there to see um, um, what he's got to see a psychologist or whatever, but that's where his confidence has come from. But um, yeah, I think Cole seems a bit more relaxed, whether he took comfort in that or whatever, but he seems to need to go and see one, so obviously work for him.